Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of the Sports Insight with your host Alamdar Khan. And yes, as you know, we give you sports information from all across the globe. You guys can surely reach out to us on our social media handle, which is at the rate of Indus News Sports. That works both for Twitter and for Instagram. But anyways, today's show is majorly focused on the Olympics. Yes, the Tokyo Olympics that are specifically happening and it's scheduled for 23rd July, which is tomorrow. We're looking forward for a better Olympics, but there are so many speculations in terms of the COVID-19 situation and the amount of delays that actually it brought to the whole situation. I think even till now, Japan is still going through the spikes and there have been a lot of debates in terms of the participations of you know all the on the individuals who want to take part but you know we actually have this one very special guest possibly one of the most experienced sports journalist with us who's covered uh, the olympics at least five times and not only that he's covered so many other events so i would like to welcome mohisha sir welcome to the show thank you thank you great sir first of all talking about olympics i would want to start off with, with your experience in terms of covering olympics because you are the only journalist that we know so far who's been out there representing not only the nation but knowing more in-depth analysis about the Olympics. Yeah, I have the honor of covering Olympics uh, five times, uh, starting, starting from 1992 Barcelona Olympics, right. then 96 uh, going on to the uh, Sydney uh, 2000, right. 2010 in Beijing and 2012 in uh, London. So uh, uh, the thing is that uh, I am putting around 35, 36 years of uh, sport journalism experience. Right. And during all these years, uh, it is sort of my bread and butter. Right. I continue to pursue, uh, continue to pursue this uh, profession. Right. And in the process, uh, covered many Olympics, uh, Commonwealth Games, Asian Games. Right. Now uh, coming up to this uh, point that. Uh, Finally, finally, we, we are hopeful that Olympic will get underway right. in, uh, say, about 10 days' time. Right. So it's very encouraging news for, from a uh, sports perspective. Right. You know, these Olympics were to be held last year. 2020, yes. But, but uh, the thing is, uh, because of COVID, COVID because yeah. of, uh, you know, uh, tough situation, the whole the world was facing at that time. Right. Uh, these were postponed for the year. Even, you know, a couple of months before uh, uh, July, there was doubts that uh, whether these Olympics uh, would go ahead as planned or not. Right. But I think uh, credit must go to uh, I IOC, International Olympic Committee. Right. Credit must go to all the National Olympic Committees around the world. They have uh, shown full support to the organizers in Japan. Right. And finally, we are, uh, you know, about to witness one of the biggest sporting extravaganza, you know, ever held in uh, on the globe. Because, right. you know, this uh, Olympic is a sort of uh, games that are being participated by every country in the world. Right. So, uh, mm. unlike football, uh, which is participated by, say, 24 or 32 countries, right. this Olympic is the only extravaganza in the world that is being competed or even participated right. by around two th 206 nations. Right. So uh, I think it's more it's more of a prestigious event in terms of its uh, lucrativity, uh, if you see it that way. Because I think it's everybody who participates in the Olympics, they they practice so much. But I think it's the honor for them getting the gold, getting the silver, getting the bronze for their country. It's I think Olympics has never been about finances. It's been about a prestige that would probably fill in your soul. Yes, uh, winning and losing is one thing. Right. Uh, but it is it is this uh, you know competing. It is uh, the gathering of the whole whole countries on one platform right. and showing their expertise in sports is what it matters you know right um, IOC never stressed on uh, on the on who is winning or who is not winning right but who is participating is more important for them true and in, in terms of participation Moisha would, would you please elaborate in terms of um, let's talk about uh, the participation of Pakistan. Uh, I would rather want to start off with those participating right now in this Olympics and then we can go back into history and time and see how uh, history was. So we'll talk, start off with a story that you broke of Najma Parveen. You know, there had been some ups and downs and variations. I would want you to tell us more about, about uh, this young individual who is taking part in the Olympics and representing Pakistan. Yeah, it was very unfortunate that, uh, you know, uh, there is a tussle going on between the Pakistan Olympic Association and right. uh, and AFP. Right. AFP, uh, AFP Athletic Federation of Pakistan. Right. I think they have uh, AFP has done. A, 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 it was not sort of gamemanship they have shown. Uh, right. They have uh, withdrawn the name of Najma. Right. Uh, at the time when everything was ready and she was about to participate, she her recognition card was 
al already there with the P uh, Pakistan Olympic Association. Right. And surprisingly, AFP withdrawn uh, her uh, candidature, her party special. As she, she, um, you must be knowing that that she is, uh, uh, she is holding a wild card. Right. Uh, a wild card is a sort of thing that, uh, and wild card is university wild card. Right. Uh, and that is a sort of honor for a country right. that if they give you, they select some, some countries, not every, every country. Right. IOC selects some countries and uh, award them a wild card uh, on uh, university quota. Right. And she was the uh, recipient of that uh, quota. Right. And surprisingly, uh, you know, three weeks uh, prior to the start of uh, the Olympic, her name was uh, withdrawn. Right. Uh, but luckily, I think uh, there are some competent people working in POA, Pakistan Olympic Association. Right. And I must uh, praise their uh, contribution and their support they have shown for Pakistani athletes. And they immediately uh, contacted IOC right. and restored uh, her candidature and restored her uh, wild card. Right. So, uh, so we definitely are looking forward for her performance in the 200 meters for sure. Yeah, but uh, when, Quite when hopeful, you let's hope yeah, so. yeah, yes, sir. when you when you participate in a, in a such a big event on a, on a wild card, right? So you you uh, I don't think you uh, hold any uh, decent uh, you know chances of winning a medal, right? So that is uh, besides the point. But since she, she is a girl, yes. her participation is bust. Pakistan right. is uh, you know there are just uh, just three women participating from uh, Pakistan side, right? And uh, I think women participation is more important than, uh, than uh, you know, men participation because a country like Pakistan, right. we, we need to um, uh, back and support women sports in, in Pakistan. Right, so we have to mm. break those barriers, those norms, and we need to promote that. And someone like you, obviously, you have so much of experience, and I am so glad that, you know, uh, her participation is all for us because someone like you breaking that news. I'll also talk about our second female participant, Mahnu Shahzad who is also going there to represent in badminton. So I think in terms of uh, our people, our teams, our individuals, we, we can even talk about Hasib Tarek, he's also going, the, the, the Canadian uh, who migrated to Canada actually, he's also going, he's also a swimmer. So there's so many individuals out there. But I just want to ask, in terms of associations, um, if we go back into history, we have won medals in uh, the Olympics and I would want you to share more in-depth analysis on that because how do you see that? And now we see a, a very lesser amount of participation in terms of back then. So where exactly are we going wrong and not being able to be the authentic part of Olympics? Yeah, starting from uh, way back in, in early f uh, 50s, you know, what we have done in that era is that uh, we were almost dominating uh, on hockey field. Right. Hockey was is still one of the uh, important events of Olympics. Right. And at that time, you know, we used to threat every every team in the world and we were a potential medal winners every time we field our hockey team in the Olympics right. and uh, we did it in Rome we did it in uh, Mexico we did it uh, in Los Angeles three times right and uh, we you know we have won gold medal in hockey but but apart from hockey we have just won two medals right and they two medals were bronze one in uh, one in wrestling right and then uh, Usain Shah uh, in late 80s in right. boxing. Right. So, uh, in, uh, just to share with you, this is the first time I think in the history of Pakistan sports right. that we have got realistic chances of winning a medal okay. in, uh, in sports other than hockey. Right. We never have been uh, uh, came so close to winning, uh, you know, any medal. Any medal. And this time around, Arshad Nadeem, a javelin thrower. Right. He is a potential medal winner. Right. Let me let me make it very clear. And, and right. if if he succeeds right. in achieving his best, you know, distance, best throw. Right. I think he he, he could go on to win medal for for the country in javelin throw. Right. He he has trained hard over the years. He has got a tremendous tremendous potential as a javelin thrower. Right. And um, it, it it present he is touching around a ninety meter. Right. That, that is a mark. If he succeeds in, uh, you know, going that far, I think he will go on to win a medal for, for the country. That will be the first time in the history of Pakistan that an athlete is going to win a medal at Olympic Games. Right. And uh, secondly, we have got three shooters who have automatically, who have qualified. They are not a wide guard holder. They are not something that they, uh, they have received uh, as, a, as a bounty, uh, you know, wild card or anything right. else. 
they have qualified uh, for the games. I'm talking about Khalil Akhtar. I'm talking about uh, uh, you know Ghulam Mustafa. Right. Uh, and and uh, so these are the people that have actually worked, struggled their way struggled to get there. Struggled and they have qualified. There. So did they have any? back end support because i think that is also one thing because so, un unless you have a talent you need to have that support as well the moral support you know in terms of i think there would be somebody backing them as well true there, there are now there are four four uh, uh, athletes who are, who are properly they are going to win they are they have got a potential to win the medal right and uh, rest even shaw sen shaw has got good chances but shaw sen shaw is uh, competing in judo event and there you need a good draw Good draw, say it, even the first order or second order or second round. If you're going to meet the world number one, right. then it becomes all more difficult. Right. But if he gets good favorable draw, right. I think he also uh, gets a good chance of uh, making an impression in the Olympics. Right. So now you are talking about uh, who has supported whom, yeah. and whether uh, the government has put uh, its efforts to train or supported these athletes to. Get into the top shape for the Olympics? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I think uh, there I've got my doubts. Right. The thing is, I don't, uh, you know, um, understand why government is not coming fully forward, right. and why these, these, uh, say, even I'm, I'm talking about shooters, they are not being sponsored fully. Right. Uh, but I um, just a couple of days uh, before I was talking to uh, executive director. Right. Uh, Pakistan Shooting Federation right. and uh, um, uh, Mr. Lodi uh, was telling me that uh, he has invested 35 million right. on shooters training during the last two years. Wow. 35 million. Wow. From 35 million, government has put only 16 lakh. 1.6 million. million. Ha not even half. Oh, right. Not even half. I think it uh, yeah, becomes less, less, yes. less, less than, than 10 half, percent. Yes. No, no, less than. No, okay, oh, 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 right. 1.6 1. 6 million. Okay. 1.6 oh, million. Like, yes, less, less than 10. And Pakistan Olympic Association, they have contributed 17 million. They have contributed almost half. Right. Pakistan Olympic Association has contributed half. Uh, 1.6 million from the government and rest of the amount they have generated from their own self. Right. Say through sponsorship, through their connections. Right. But they, they, you know, I'm talking about uh, athletic, uh, I'm talking about uh, this uh, uh, shooting federation. Right. They have succeeded in training their uh, three potential medal winners right. uh, to, the, to the level that where they can thread the best in the world. You know, um, our neighbors India has got very good shooters. Right. Even uh, you know, uh, Russia, Russia, China, uh, America. Right. They have got very good shooters. So when it comes to winning the medal, they they potentially they threat everyone uh, for uh, in the in that effort. But the thing is, first time, first time I think we have succeeded in uh, you know, entering the games with right. the, with a with a with a hope that we are going to win a medal, whether it will be in uh, javelin throw in athletics right. or uh, from any one of the shooters. Right. I would also want to uh, take our view and you back to when we won the hockey. I would want to talk more about hockey as well because we were just talking about it. So how exactly was your experience when you were with the team, when Pakistan managed to win that trophy? How do you feel and what, what's the story behind so it? The last, the, last time, uh, the, la the last time we won uh, any major international hockey event was in 1994. Right. There we won the World Cup. Right. The team was led by Shabazz Ahmed Sr. Right. I also accompanied the team to uh, Sydney. Right. And uh, there, you know, uh, that um, I cannot share with you. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> right. Because this is something very, very secret. But, uh, uh, but the thing is that had I started writing a story on the episode what happened there just before the start of that World Cup? Right. I don't think uh, Pakistan would be able to even, uh, even to compete in that event. Right. They, it was, it was the Benazir Bhutto's era. Right. As a prime minister. Right. And uh, I, I'm, 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 I was pretty sure that I, had I started uh, writing stories on what happened today or what happened uh, yesterday right. from Sydney. Right. I don't think uh, you know. Uh, the team would not the be team able would to not be able even to compete. They they, they would have called the team back. Right. But uh, you know that was not we, we were there. We were there to uh, 
because we have we have got very strong team at that point of time. Right. Shawas Senior was the uh, captain. Mansoor right. was uh, under the bar. Right. Naveed, uh, uh, Naveed Alam died. Right, yes. He was one of the fullbacks. Rana Mujahid was the second one. Right. Uh, Wasim Faroz was there at the uh, left out position. Right. Tahir Zaman was the in, uh, right in position. Right. Uh, Shafkat Mahmoud was there. Uh, Asif Bajwa was there. Right. He was on the right out position. So it was a very very strong team. Right. And their team was capable of beating any team in the world. Right. Ultimately, it was Mansoor, uh, late Mansoor, right. uh, who won the semi-final for Pakistan, uh, you stopping the plenty strokes against Germany, and he, he, he went on to win final for Pakistan, uh, uh, stopping Dalmi. Right. Dalmi was uh, one of the uh, leading players, Dutch leading player, right. and he stopped his uh, plenty stroke to win the World Cup for Pakistan. Right. Well, thank you, sir, for being a part of the show and discussing the world of Olympics with us. We'll truly want you more and your wisdom more on our show. Thank like, you very much. Like. So, yes, so this is pretty much the update. What we'll do is we'll take a quick break. Once we get back from the break, there is more coming from the world of sports. See you guys after the break. And welcome back from the break. And yes, before the break, we were still discussing the world of Olympics. And not to forget, we still are discussing what's truly happening in the world of Olympics. And not to forget, taking you back, there has been so many issues with regards to the execution of the Olympics. But anyways, to discuss the in-depth analysis of truly what the Olympics is all about, we have with us Manfred, all the way from South Africa. Manfred, welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Thank you. Great. So, Manfred, I'd, I'd start off with, obviously, in terms of the COVID-19 situation, how things have been, you know, very crucial for uh, not only the players, but obviously for those who've been trying to organize it, because since 2020, things have been very hard in terms of executing. But now, it's, it's almost there now, and we see things, even though things are slightly out of control in terms of COVID, but how do you see the execution of uh, the entire Olympic plan here in 2021 in Japan? Sure, it's, it's, it's a tough one. I mean, the fact that the Olympic Games are actually happening is, is, is almost a semi-miracle, isn't it? Right. Um, it? It was always a case of, of if the if Tokyo were not able to, to pull it off in 2021, then this version of the Olympic Games would be cancelled and we would be going through to, to Paris in 2024. So a lot of pressure was, was put on, on all the role players to, you know, to make sure it happened. A lot of money was invested. Um, and you know, I mean, from from the athletes' point of view, the participation point of view, uh, a lot of time and, and, and training and effort has come, and, and under very difficult circumstances, because what do you train for when you don't know if it's happening, and uh, when it is, when is it going to happen? So right. it's been a it's been it's been a really really difficult time for I think everybody involved, from the organisers uh, to the IOC to the athletes. It's it's, it's certainly something we've never experienced before, and I, I doubt very much we'll see that, certainly not in our lifetimes, uh, something like this ever again. Right. But if we talk about the risks involved, obviously, if we talk about the risks in terms of not only the players, but also, you know, the people who would probably be interacting, because I mean, up till now, there's still a lot of debate in terms of in the spectators. But the point is, we know how sports work. If we look back into Euro 2020 that took place, there was you know, a lot of crowd and a lot of spikes are happening in terms of the COVID-19 cases. And I think more of these public interactions may escalate them. If we talk about, for instance, players, if we talk about Joanna Conta to begin with, she withdrew from Tokyo Olympics because of the COVID-19 positive and she was positive and her entire squad had to you know, omit from joining in the Olympics. So how do you see that? in the future development of athletes because a few days back we also hear stories in terms of you know how COVID-19 cases are still being found in the Olympic hotels and stuff so how will they control this if they want to pull off such a great magnitude of an event? Yeah I think the reality is is that this is no matter how much you try and, and whatever efforts you put in this is it's so easy for, for COVID to slip into, into a bubble. I mean, we've seen that um, um, on a number of occasions and so on. But by and large, what, um, if you look at um, sports in general, if you look at, for example, the, the American um, athletics trials, um, they were very strict, they were very quick to act and they were very, very, uh, uh, they were able to very quickly neutralize any threats. 
Um, it does, of course, mean that you know if, if you're an athlete in whatever sporting code you're taking part in, you test positive. At this point in time, the, your ch the chances of you actually competing at this Olympic Games are are pretty slim. Um, I mean, obviously, they will have made uh, uh, arrangements for self isolation. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, to basically look after not just uh, the infected athletes, but the rest of the of, of the village. But it's certainly trying. I mean, as you say, we don't know about spectators. Um, the last I heard, there won't there won't be any spectators. Um, and to be fair, the, um, the 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 least the less interaction, obviously, the less you know, the less possibility of anybody contracting a virus. To that extent, what's what's happening, and, the, and I think this is going to be the case going forward, irrespective of whether there's COVID or not, is that if you come in, you do your you do your event. Um, if you carry on, you, you go through the rounds and so on, and you stay in the village. If you if you bomb out in the first round, you go home. You don't stay like you used to in the past, um, and that is the only way that you know that you can kind of semi-control it. Obviously, also. Teams and athletes are arriving in staggered starts. I mean, and from a South African point of view, we've had a number of, of um, so the athletics team hasn't departed yet. They won't go yet. The, the soccer team has just left. The rugby team has just arrived. Incidentally, they've had uh, on that flight there were two positive uh, uh, COVID positives, not amongst the rugby players, but there were two positives. So those players have gone into isolation. Um, and of course, you know, it, it does, it, it is an incredibly challenging operation to do. And the only way to, you know, to, to uh, ensure that this happens is literally by minimizing contact. So that effectively does mean that um, I can't see any spectators happening. Mixed right. zones where interviews will happen will, will probably be, be virtual. Um, and, um, you know, your staff contingent is, is a lot smaller than it's always been. So it's been, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been incredibly challenging. Um, the fact that there are in Olympics, I just, I think is, is, um, is quite an achievement, um, you know, for for Tokyo to, to be able to pull it off and, and as well as, uh, um, you know, the IOC to, get, to, to actually push through with it. Right. Let's hope things go well. If we look to how things are right now, uh, in terms of people pulling out and not being a part, we talk about, for instance, we talk about Ahmad Salah. Salah is not allowed to take part in the Olympics to represent his country, Egypt. On the contrary, if we talk about Naomi Osaka, she said that she will be representing her country, you know, uh, in the in the Olympics uh, section. But it's still confusions out there. Even jo Roger Federer, obviously, will not be taking a part in the competition because of knee injury. So there are too many things happening in terms of the whole situation. And like I said, for instance, just as we mentioned that Joanna Conta is not taking part. She's British number one tennis player. But still, I mean, like if they manage to pull off this event of this magnitude uh, and not have a lot of cases or maybe come to a point of having that Delta variant take over, because I think currently all the countries out there are seriously scared in terms of the fourth variant because if we talk about vaccinations less than four percent of the people in japan are vaccinated so that's also another tricky thing even if you are you are not very liable to fight the fourth delta variant so it can be a very havoc if things don't really go as per planned in the olympics yeah look it could i mean basically what happens is is that the the athletes anybody who's part of the olympic village cannot leave the village they just they can't they they once you're in you're in and you can't go anywhere right um which basically means that any athlete coach in the past they used to be able to go into town go sightseeing you know things like that that's not happening right you come you compete you go back to your room that's it um right. very very strict measures and and obviously it's it's not the same as it's been in the past because that interaction has always been what athletes um sports people thrive on right um but this is the only way that the Olympic Games are going to happen. The, um, you know, the fact that Roger Federer is not is not playing because of an injury that, right. that is, excuse me, that is not unusual in terms of, of um, major competitions where athletes pull out because of injury. It, it happens, and you know, obviously with with COVID, we we're looking at it uh, completely different. We're going okay, 
um, how much the, as COVID had an impact on it. But the reality is, if, is if, if he's complaining about a knee injury and he doesn't want to risk it, um, that is not COVID related. Uh, Conta, of course, the fact that she is, uh, you know, that it is COVID related, it's a big shame because she's, she's now missing out on, on something that she's obviously been looking forward to and wants to try, uh, you know, compete in. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Salah not being able to, to compete on behalf of, of his uh, his country is. I mean, that's an age-old debate that's been going on before we've had the pandemic, uh, where countries are not willing to release, uh, or other clubs are not really willing to release players, and you know that's a conversation that has to happen with FIFA and UEFA and, and the IOC and so on. And, and um, you know, it's it's a big shame for Egypt that their star player. Is not allowed to go to the Olympics. So I, I'm pretty sure that that uh, Salah would be very keen to, right. to, to go to the Olympics. Well, um, um, let's, those hope, are not yeah, let's hope, Manfred, that you know eventually all the situations in terms of the Olympics go on a good side, go to, go on a good yeah. note. I would all thank you for being a part of the show and discussing the world of Olympics with us. We're looking forward for the execution of the Olympics itself. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. So that Manfred from South Africa, and yes, he also talked about the same thing in terms of the Olympics. It's a bigger magnitude event, and all the players, the key individuals who are there, will be only allowed to go perform and then directly go back to their hotel. So they would not be allowed to go uh, to maybe sightseeing or different places. Maybe that is probably the only way that they can control. But not to forget that, you know, a few weeks ago, we were hearing so many stories about, you know, how COVID-19, uh, you know, different cases were being found at the hotel and even at the Olympic Hotel. So let's hope that, you know, they managed to con control that in the long run to execute a better form of Olympics. Anyways, guys, don't forget, Olympics starts July 23rd and ends on August 9th. Anyways, if you guys want to reach out to us, you can on our social media handle, which is at the rate of Indus News Post. That works both for Twitter and for Instagram. Till then, take good care of yourselves and bye-bye.